All right, hi everyone. Uh, this is Brad Cummings from Shenandoah Studio. I'm here uh, for a, a challenge game today of Desert Fox with uh, Jeff, our uh, founding producer. He will be playing the side of the Commonwealth. Have any words of wisdom? Um, Feeling confident? Well, I, I at least I know what I'm going to do. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to get rushed, and either I stop him and I win, or he, I don't and he does. So, <laughs> And then we're joined by Bruce Garrick, who is a friend of the studio, playtester, um, podcaster, blogger, many things in wargaming, great friend of computer and, and board wargaming. Bruce, you're going to be playing the Axis today. How are you feeling? Yeah, we are feeling good. <laughs> great. So uh, just so everyone knows, we're going to be playing, and I'll just switch to Bruce's screen so we can see, we're going to be playing the uh, Rusite Ridge scenario, which is... Uh, representing uh, Rama's, Rama's initial attack um, in this area, uh, we represented by you know five days or, or kind of rounds of gameplay, um, and the goal of the of Bruce will be to um, exit units off to the uh, side of the map, to the uh, right side of the map, um, and Jeff's job will be to try to hold them from doing that and not lose any of the key victory point locations, which we have uh, all main. Uh, Riverside Ridge, um, I believe. That's it. oh, sorry. And then the uh, Alan Hoff, is that right? The, the Alan, Alan Hoffa Ridge and Abu Shamla are a total of five together. Right. Yeah. So uh, that will be the goal of Jeff. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. Well, hello everybody. So I'm playing the uh, I'm playing the Axis, and the scenario is a little balanced against the Axis. So if I lose, then I have an excuse. Um, <laughs> The uh, there there are a bunch of things that Axis can do in this scenario. It's actually a very interesting scenario. I really like it. Um, it was the the main tweak that had to be uh, done over the course of testing was what the real victory point um, threshold should be. And right now, the victory point threshold is that Jeff wins if if I only get five victory points. I win if I get ten victory points, and then in between is a draw. So there are a couple things you should notice. So take a look over here. Um, I have a bunch of, uh, here are my two 15th and 21st Panzer Divisions are kind of... Bruce, uh, do you want to zoom in on those? Sure, sure, sure. Perfect. Look right here. So take a look here. <clears throat> These are a bunch of, uh, I've got, so each one has, um, so fifth, this is 15th Panzer, and there's the Panzer, Panzer Grenadier, and Recon. And then here's a slightly weaker uh 21st, which has Panzer. Panzer Grenadier's only got two uh, strength pips, and the Recon's only got one. So, <clears throat> obviously, you look over here at Ruizat, there's a one little uh, Commonwealth infantry sitting there, and uh, he's only got two strength pips. And the, because the ridge uh, only provides one, one hit benefit with uh, low strength defenders, it's kind of a pretty, uh, it's kind of a pretty uh, inviting target. <laughs> Problem is, that panzer there can't get there because he can't go through these day years, which are depressions. They can't, he can't get there um, because he can he moves three, and it costs four. It takes four points to get there. So I can't really get into um, into Ruiz out with that panzer. But this panzer down here, who could get there, can't get there because he is out of he basically is out of gas right now. Uh, Rommel <laughs> had a lot of uh, supply. <laughs> problems during the campaign and he can't go where he needs to go. So <clears throat> my panzers are not really available to me in a, in a lightning attack on Ruizat. But Ruizat's five points. If I take Ruizat, then I'm one point away from getting a draw on the first turn of the game. Um, so the way to do that is I could take this panzer grenadier, because he doesn't have any problem moving through the deers. So he goes there and there, and then he goes there and there. Take a look at that. That's an opening attack. And you wonder, gosh, what are the chances that that's going to work? And I'll tell you exactly what the chances are. They are 16.3%. And like rolling a six or one, depending on which one of those sides is, gonna, is, going to, uh, is going to capture the ridge, everything else is not going to. So I'm not a big fan of that because I'm not a big gambler. So... Instead of doing that, I'm going to do what 
a, a very conservative general would do, and that's push all of these Panzer Grenadiers up into Tel El Isa. The reason for that is, if you notice, that's two victory points, and I don't own it. And Jeff, if I do anything else in my first turn, could easily sneak an armor and an infantry up into Tel El Isa, and then for the all five turns of the game, I'd be bashing my head up against the wall trying to take that. It's a very effective first move for the Commonwealth, so I'm not going to let him do that. Every so my first move <laughs> take Tel El Isa. It's very conservative. There you go. Oh. So, let's see. So the turn's been sent. Let's pull up Jeff's screen. Hang on a second. No worries. Yeah, so um, is that kind of the recommended access opening move? I know that's generally what I will do as well, even so, even in the campaign as well. I think it's... Yeah, and the, so in the, so in, the camp, in the campaign, it's different, because in the campaign, you don't get two victory points for Tel Eliza. So in the campaign, if the, um, if the axis doesn't take Tel Elisa and the Commonwealth decides to sneak infantry in there. I love that, or see, because they're going to get trapped there. The, the campaign's going on for hundreds of turns, and right. if, the, uh, if the Commonwealth wants to stick a, uh, a couple of units up in Tel Elisa to get, to get surrounded and destroyed later, that's great. Uh, they don't really have a benefit to sitting there, um, but in Ruizat Ridge, it's only five turns, and those guys only have to survive for those five turns, and they deny the access uh, two victory points. So that's a good move. Uh, for the act for the allies, if they don't, um, if the axis doesn't take it on the first turn, makes sense. Hey Jeff, what do you think? Opening um, moves. Well, the Commonwealth actually doesn't start this scenario in a, in such a bad position. I mean, all my units are pathetically weak, and I'm looking <laughs> down the barrel of the entire Panzer army. But other than that, pretty much everything's fine. <laughs> You know, I've I already have defenders on or near most of the major objectives I need to be worrying about. The only thing is that, um, again, this unit right here on Ruisite Ridge. Right now, Bruce Bruce already did the math out. The chances <laughs> are about one in six, or as I like to think about it, it's about the chance of losing a round of Russian roulette. And <laughs> it's. <laughs> And it's a truism of the game that if you play Russian roulette for long enough, you are eventually going to lose. Yeah. So rather than that, I am going to send I'm going to send a tank down there. So tanks not only give me more combat power there. But armor is itself harder to to dislodge unless you have, unless you also have armor to make the attack. Right. And as Bruce talked about, um, getting armor up to Rosite Ridge is not as easy as it looks. And then I'm going to re reinforce El Alamein. Um, the game is highly mobile. His troops are not anywhere near El Alamein, but they could be there surprisingly quickly. Right. And at ten victory points, if I if I lose that space, it's game over. I can't take any chances with El Alamein if I want to come out on top here. So, yeah, and they and we talked last week about recon units and just you know how quickly they can move and take territory and really, uh, I have, you know, start surrounding and, and making moves. Okay, so Bruce, awesome. that should be back over to you. Yeah, yep, so we, I've got it here. I see your move. For those watching, uh, you know, we are uh, working with lovely Game Center. It's uh, it's pretty good, but not always. Uh, totally real time, but uh, go ahead, Bruce. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So, so here's a little dealio. Uh, so it looks like Jeff is so Jeff has now put four points of strength into Ruiz at Ridge. That gives him now two points of Ridge terrain benefit. So the first two hits that I inflict on him uh, on the uh, um, on the Ridge will be soaked up. So uh, I need. Three hits to even inflict one, uh, and he has armor there, so that gives him a defense benefit. Uh, oh my guys, roll at uh, minus ten percent. Right. So Ruizad is quickly becoming uh, a little fortress there. <laughs> Question becomes, um, you know, what 
what do I need to do? So I've got, I need to get six victory points to just kind of get out of this with a draw. I need 10 to win. Now, the victory uh, conditions give me points for clearing minefields. So if you see here, Dare El Shane, there's a minefield there. If I clear that minefield, I get a victory point. Down here in the corner, knock Abu Dwais. If I clear that minefield, I get a victory point. So that's another two victory points if I can if I can take those guys. Um, if I can destroy the infantry down here, the 9th Indian Brigade, and knock Abu Dwais, that's another victory point. So we've got two, three, four, five. So I have a plan to get to five if I were going to uh, do that. Right. It kind of diffuses my strength, though, a little bit. Um, the other thing I don't like is I don't like the idea that uh, Jeff could take this guy in Kapanga, the 6th New Zealand. If he moves him up to Ruizat Ridge, it plays a little game with the, uh, with the way that defense is calculated. If at least half of your strength points in a space are elite, and that's definitely what, that's what that little symbol on the 6th uh, New Zealand shows... Right. then you get another minus 10% of defense benefit. I would roll it minus 10. The armor would be another minus 10. So basically my infantry, which rolls at 30% anyway, uh, would be minus 20, would only hit 10% of the time. So that would be pretty well fortified. So what I would like to do instead is I would like to uh, kind of cause him a little trouble here. Um, but the question is how. So... I could, one thing I could do is I could move and I could cut off the, uh, the um, uh, sort of reinforcement to Ruizat. He can still get around me there, uh, but it's a little more difficult. There's another thing I can do, which is to bring these guys uh, up and around or down, down, around the, uh, down around the south because remember, I'm also trying to exit. I can't exit uh, a whole bunch, but every strength point that I exit is um, is a victory point. Now note that if I were to bring this recon down here, that would be <clears throat> just too, uh, too juicy a target for our New Zealand friends in Daryl Munasib. So that's probably not a good idea. But what I do also want to do is I want to clear out El Cusayir so that I can move some of my Italian units in there. I'm also moving these units one space at a time. If I move them one space at a time, it preserves their supply. And I do want to keep those guys supplied because those recon units can move very fast, and I don't want to have to spend individual supply points on recon units. So let's just start to, to um, stretch the defense, as they would say in football. Uh, and there I go. That's my move. But that southern desert that's really got a lot of areas that you can, you know, move really quickly through if if the Commonwealth isn't careful. So Jeff, what are you gonna do now? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank Bruce for that very enlightening look at his strategy. <laughs> um, but yeah, the southern desert can be extremely dangerous. Um, it is very easy to let people leak past you, and you can't really afford that. Um, as far as what I'm going to do. So Bruce, um, while Jeff is thinking out his counter strategy, um, mm -hmm. how was it playtesting a game when, you know, you knew the rules were going to be shifting uh, every once in a while, you know, we were working through different challenges, uh -huh. trying different solutions. How was that? Well, that was, it was actually a lot of fun because um, what I would do is I would try to find ways in which the current rules uh, gave me some advantage and then use them as much as possible in that way to see if uh, if that was unbalancing in any way. I mean, one of the things about playtesting is playtesting gives you an opportunity to try to break a game. Right. And, uh, you know, I like to, I think most gamers who like strategy games like this kind of like to min-max and sort of put different combinations together and see what the most powerful combination is. Uh, there, was a, there was a rule early on w in which uh, the recon units became this kind of interesting wild card where they could act as armor or infantry in the combined arms bonus 
depending what if you had infantry, they would count as armor, you get combined arms. If you had armor, they'd count as infantry, you get combined arms. Uh, and they turned into this sort of super unit, uh, which was quickly um, quickly taken out of the rules. Um, that one was pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but interesting. You know, that was a, that was a fun thing to try to figure out. And then once it uh, once it was taken out of the rules appropriately, I, you know, you just kind of see how the rules are. It's a, it's a it's an interesting puzzle every time you play. Right. Okay. So the main thing I'm worried about at this point is pulling out pulling out some of my singleton units mm. and starting to consolidate them because. I've got a lot of run, one point units running around on the board. I don't want Bruce. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to give Bruce any free victory points. Right, because those are really <clears> easy <throat> to pick off, right? And you, and I, you know, he can score victory points for each of those. So that's that's the idea. That's a smart strategy. <laughs> okay. So. Um, so I guess it's my turn now. So yes. Yeah, so so uh, Jeff is abandoning Dare El Ragil. Um, as Jeff starts to pull guys out of the south, uh, it might be appropriate for me to start to push guys into the south. And I think this is the time when the Italian armor sort of starts to make a little move. This is Italian infantry. I will take up a spot here. Um... And so what we're just trying to do is we're trying to push a little bit um, the uh, Deir El Munasib uh, New Zealand infantry is a you know they're they're not to be toyed with, um, but uh, so I need to I have five points of armor there. Uh, if he wants to counterattack those guys in the open, uh, he's free to do that. So let's make that my move. Sounds like a yeah, sounds I, like a veiled uh, threat. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff, sorry. Yeah. Um, You're not going to do that? No. <laughs> no. That's, uh, you know, Italian troops, when you're, when you're looking at the history of the North African campaign, Italian troops often don't get a lot of respect. <laughs> um, and I think that, I think that that really overlooks how they're, these troops really did some amazing things, considering that their country was much poorer than any other major combatant in World War II. They didn't have an industrial base. Um, they just didn't have a lot of equipment. Right. And because of the way the Italian army was set up, they usually weren't particularly well trained either. So um, I've, I've always made it a policy when I'm playing to... Keep, give the Italians a little bit of due respect because hmm. if you if you blow them off like you can in other games, they will surprise you. <laughs> and when you're running on thin reserves like I am here, you can't afford too many nasty surprises. Right. So I think what I'm going to be doing at this point is consolidating a sort of mobile reserve force here at Alam Halfa. So. Because Bruce does seem to be developing an attack, to, uh, an attack to the south. Um, but I have to remember that he also has these guys here, and he could just as easily go in in the north. Right. So what I want is a reserve of mobile units that I can send as necessary wherever the uh, wherever that situation happens to develop. Well, and you'll be able to, you know, quickly respond as he branches out and things like that, which would be great. Well, and that's that's the advantage of being the defender. Um, I intend to take full advantage of that because <laughs> I kind of kind of need everything I can get. And I know we mentioned this earlier, but you know, uh, in order for Bruce to exit units off the map, he has to they still have to be in supply. So that's that's always a trick maintaining those supply lines, mm -hmm. you know, several spaces long. Well, that's true. <laughs> So let's see. I can do a couple things. It looks like Jeff's backing off a little bit in the north. He really only has three units up there. Um, he's got guys committed to the defensive Ruiz at Ridge. Um, so the question becomes, what do we want to do with all this? <laughs> um, 
you know, I could <clears throat> I could preserve some strength in the north by taking my armor and just kind of creeping it up. I can um, I can develop a little bit of more of a threat to uh, to El Alamein by bringing everybody in here. Uh, I think that is a little bit um, too limiting, though, because that sort of doesn't give me a place to go afterwards. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to sort of consolidate all my guys here. So now I've got two armor units there. I'm going to come into here into um, they come here. Let's see how I want to do this. Why don't I move these guys? No, no, I didn't want to do that. Let's go here. Let's go to Dare El Mirayer. And so now what I have is I have units that have sort of a, a way to get out into uh, into space here. Um, and uh, I have my armor consolidated in Kusayir. My armor in El Kusir, if you notice, one, two, three, can go straight into uh, Rui's Outridge next turn. So that's certainly threatening him there. Definitely. And, you, and you'll have the option to supply those units as well on the next day. So you Yes, that, those, the, uh, I can easily uh, make that armor become supplied next turn. Okay. Um, so... As strongly fortified as it is, um, my position here at Kapanga with the 6th New Zealand and the 1st Free French Brigade is looking increasingly untenable. <laughs> um, there's mobile forces to the right, mobile forces to the left, mobile forces in front, and that's just not a real fun ball game. So what I can count on Kapanga to do is even if I abandon it, the mines are still going to take time for Bruce to clear. Right. It's going to slow him down. Uh, yeah. He's not going to be able to rampage right through it. I hope. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is pull these guys back to alumni yield. So, why there? It does a couple things. It puts them close enough for mutual support with the rest of their division, the New Zealand division. Um, it does open up a gap between Ruasite Ridge and Alam Nail, but frankly, if Bruce wants to try to take one of his heavy units through here, he's welcome. He's welcome <laughs> to do that. Uh, I think it would be kind of like sticking your, fing your finger in a sausage grinder, and if that happens, I'm going to be all too happy to turn the crank. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, New Zealanders are forming together, and seeing some really great uh, responsiveness from the Game Center servers today. Yeah, it's going. It's working well. <laughs> all right. Well, gosh, a um, couple of things I want to do then. Uh, if that's going to be the case, and notice that, the, by the way, everybody take a look at the clock. It's been actually moving very slowly. Um, you sometimes on the first turn, you only get three or four impulses. It looks like I have had one, two, three, four already. This is my fifth impulse. You're getting a lot. You're, this yeah. is great I'm for gonna, you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take my infantry um, here and just drive it down. Now I can move four spaces because it's unopposed movement. I control every single one of those. I'm just going to creep these guys into Sidi Abdel Rahman and just uh, preserve their supply state. And then this may be the last impulse of the turn. <laughs> I can only hope. I know. Hmm. Much much like many of our games, the, uh, the allies are hoping for that clock to go as fast as they can. At least in Ridge. Well, the, really, it's the defender. Time is on right. the defender's side. Um, right. Because that definitely does shift. And I, I think that's one unique thing about um, about Desert Fox is that you know, it's not necessarily just the end game. You know, pretty quickly, the Commonwealth in the campaign game will need to go on the offensive and need to make those, those, big, those big moves. 
That's absolutely it's very true. back and forth. Um, okay, so with that accomplished, I'm going to pass. All right. I hope this ends the day. Seriously. And no. Seriously. <laughs> okay. um, I've got, I mean, I've got my guys pulled back. I've got a defense line. Um, I don't want to overcommit my forces until I see what Bruce is actually going to do. Right. Um, there's always the very strong impulse to do something when you're the commander. <laughs> um, and sometimes, sometimes, often that's the right thing to do. Sometimes it's not. So that advice you'd have for new players is to, you um, don't always have to make a move? I mean, I, I, it's really a good idea to keep yourself moving, but if it's near the end of the day and you're really not sure where the, um, where the other guy is going to go in yet, mm -hmm. because one of the, you know, one of the advantages, at least at Ruicite Ridge, is that the Axis are stronger than I am, but they're not that much stronger. So I'm really uh, what what I'm looking for is to see which strategy for victory Bruce is going to commit himself to. Right. And then I'm going to deploy accordingly. Right. Bruce with your sixth impulse. What? A <laughs> yeah. Well, that's <laughs> it's a real uh, luxury here. I'm going to take my flak. Now my flak units can prevent uh, the. Commonwealth Desert Air Force from putting my units out of supply. I'm going to put them in Sidi Abdul Rahman so that I can keep my Tel El Isa units uh, protected so that units that are um, adjacent to that come under the flak protection. So that's the end of the day. <laughs> so on to day two. Okay, so on we talked about this last week, um, but this is the uh, new supply system for the Axis. Basically, um, supply, you know, Rommel through this whole campaign was really stretching his supply, li supply lines, not entirely his fault, <laughs> just not getting the things he needed when he needed them. But you're not going to take the blame away from it? Uh, you, probably, you, you probably don't really want me to start. All right. <laughs> um, you know, Rommel, Rommel certainly had to deal with a, a large amount of interdiction on his supply lines. Um, it's also true that he tended to make plans without uh, consulting <laughs> without without looking at how much supply do I have and how realistic and how much realistically am I going to get. <laughs> His attitude was, okay, here's my plan. Now it's your problem to get me the supplies. I need. <laughs> hmm. Isn't uh, I mean it's one approach, but when you're when you're separated by from home by a hostile ocean. And a couple thousand <laughs> miles of desert, it may not be your best idea. <laughs> That's true. So, Bruce here, you have a, a limited amount of supply for the entire scenario, right? So you yes. have to kind of decide when you're going to use it, when you're going to make those those right. big calls. So interestingly enough, um, I have a uh, I only have three supply points, um, and I want to do something in particular with the ones that I have. The, each, each supply point guarantees, so like I can take a supply point and re, resupply that guy, resupply that guy, resupply that guy. Okay, now I've, got, I've committed three supply points. All those guys will be uh, for sure supplied. And then if you see down here in the bottom, seven estimated units, 7.3, means I can clear an estimated 7.3 more unsupplied. So basically if I do that, how many unsupplied guys do I have on the map? One, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> On average, I'm going to have a map full of supplied units if I commit that much supply. But that's crazy because <laughs> I don't uh, have that luxury. That would blow everything in one turn. Right. So I have one. The, the abandonment of Kaponga does one thing for me. And that means that Gebel Kalak does not have to be garrisoned every impulse because Jeff cannot get to it in one move. Right. So now I'm going to, so the Italian Trento uh, motorized division, I'm going to make sure that all those guys are supplied. And as you can see, I just supplied pretty much the whole map, except for, very unfortunately, I have one Panzer unit that didn't make it. But I can now abandon 
Gebel Kalak. What I'm going to do... Do you mind zooming in? Just a bit. Sorry. I'm zooming in right here. So cool. you can see I have three guys in Gebel Kalak. There's no way the Commonwealth can get to Gebel Kalak while I move. If, <clears throat> if there were still units somewhere adjacent, I would need to leave somebody in there uh, because cutting that space off would cut my whole southern supply line. But right. what I'm going to do instead, since I have that luxury, I have guys up here in El Kusayir. So these guys in El Kusayir, I could just bring, I can bring down and cover next turn. There's no, um, there's no threat to Gebel Kalak. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move some of these guys out. So let's do this. Let's take one uh, fifteenth Panzer Grenadier. Let's move them to Samakit Gabala. Let's take the uh, Trento, and let's just push them. <laughs> let's push all these guys. And I have a recon here. <laughs> the recon is an interesting uh, unit because doesn't need to, doesn't need to have. So notice, I go here to Abu Shawahid. Now take a look at this corner of the map. I can exit from Talat Sultana here. Right. Going through the El Mikatat Ridge. But this recon actually doesn't need to. He can go south through Deir Musa and El Egul and then off the map because, uh, or he could go through El Mikatat and El Egul. So basically he does not need that track that's going off the edge of the map. So putting him there sort of puts the uh, puts the uh, Commonwealth in sort of a in a sort of a difficult spot. And I like when the Commonwealth is in a difficult spot when I'm playing the Axis. So I will commit to that move. Nice. All right, Jeff. There's a big movement in the south. Um, may need to yeah. May I'm, need to waiting grab to I'm waiting for it to actually show up on my screen. <laughs> I may need to jump out of it real quick. Um, so if you go to um, So while we're waiting for that turn, um, so we were talking earlier about kind of the difference between the campaign and this shorter scenario. It seems like you play a lot looser, a lot bolder in this scenario as the access than you would in the campaign. Um, in general, um, you do because you don't have to preserve your guys uh, to the end of four months. You just have to preserve them to the end of five turns. Now, on the other hand, uh, every access unit in this scenario is really precious because, uh, you know, in the campaign, if you lose a, a recon unit or you lose that flak unit, you know, that flak unit uh, costs you three points if the commonwealth destroys it. If, the, if you cost the Axis three victory points in this scenario, they're not going to have time to make it up. I mean, that's a, that's a crushing... That, that basically takes any chance of victory, I think, away, unless the Commonwealth makes really bad moves uh, and sort of limits you to a draw at best. Um, but in the campaign, you can overcome that, that kind of thing. Uh, so in one way, yes, you play a little faster because you have to. Uh, right. In the campaign, you can sort of be more conservative and make your moves uh, later, you know, in subsequent weeks. But... Uh, you also have to be careful. If you lose something, if you lose a unit here, uh, you're really kind of in trouble. So Jeff now, at the start of the day as the Commonwealth, gets to make a, a Desert Air Force airstrike, uh, which can uh, remove the supply of potentially uh, you know, an entire uh, space of units. It really just you know, it depends on the rules, obviously. So Yeah, so the question is, who am I really worried about? That is a good question. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and I think the answer is actually the Italian armor. Mm hmm I agree with you. <laughs> that means a lot, thanks. <laughs> so, we'll see. Okay, so I put one of his two armor divisions out of supply. The Italian armor is too mobile by half, and it is bumming around exactly where I don't want them. Now, out of sheer morbid curiosity, now that I have my mobile defense, my mobile reserve constituted, what would happen if I sent it? <laughs> it would be... It would be... That, that could end bad. <laughs> so I think something other interesting about this uh, 
Desert Fox, is that there's on tracks the, connecting... Hand, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. On yeah. the other hand, this out-of-supply Panzer Grenadier Division is a little more under strength, and the Italian armor that was backing him up just got tossed around. So just the name of experiment here. All right. Okay. Oh, he held. He held. But I know Bruce is now going to have to worry about my little reserve force. That I mean, a lot of times it's about, you know, making them waste time doing things that they don't want to do just to... Well, I'm, um, you know, and I'm, I'm worried about his armor. I'm not thrilled about it. But <laughs> on the other hand, if he sends that forward, there's other things I can do. Right. That is very true. That is very true, sir. Well, let's see what, we, what I can do. So, of course, everybody can watch on the screen um, the uh, the armor here in Karat al Himemat. Let's just. This is a great thing that uh, I think I probably was pointed out in the uh, previous hangout. But look at how it tells me exactly. Um, I have a I have a six percent. Uh, uh, um, you know. 51% chance um, right. of getting no hits, a 38% chance of getting one hits, 9% chance of getting two hits. Um, so I basically have I have a pretty good chance of whiffing on this attack. Um, and furthermore, it just lets the Dere El Munasib guys just sneak right in and cut me off completely, which is not ideal. Oh, you're um, not doing that? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was looking at those attack stats and basically saying, please... Please, 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 please misclick and hit uh, and hit commit. I, yeah, I, I I knew better. Yeah, so so that's not uh, that's not ideal. Let's just look around the map here. Let's think of things that could go wrong. Um, ultimately, right now we're all kind of focused on the south, and that's not a bad thing. Um, what we need to do here is we need to bring the um, we need to bring the German armor down to where it can make a difference. Now I could throw the German armor in here. It's not great. Uh, it would but it would <coughs> I would likely uh, destroy a unit and that's some victory points for me. Right. But I don't want to do that yet. Uh, I don't think it's necessary really. I think it could be much more effective next turn when it participates in a hopeful combined arms attack. So I'm just going to move my armor down into there. And let's see what we can do with that. Um, and then the other thing I want to do um, the question is what to do with Trieste. Now Trieste, we could swing him down into here. I don't think I need him there. Trieste could also Start pushing to try to flank Kapanga and Ruiz at Ridge. That puts him sub, uh, sub, subjects him to a possible uh, counterattack from Ruiz at, but he can't. The th here's the interesting thing: if I put look, if I put him guy here and Mkawa here, <coughs> Jeff is now in the position where if he wants to counterattack down into Mkawa here, we'll just expand that. He can't use both of the guys in Ruiz Out Ridge. I'm just going to swing in and take Ruiz Out Ridge. If he wants to reinforce Ruiz Out Ridge, it's got to come from somewhere. It may come from El Alamein, could come from Deir El Shayin, or he could even move his guys up from Alam Nail. If he wants to do that, um, then he once again opens up a possibility of uh, units moving through uh, and getting into Abu Shamla. I'm not going to do that, but I will uh, just slowly kind of bring these guys in. And then uh, I will move my guy from El Kusayir. I will move him. Uh, actually, you know what? I think I may just leave him there. I want him supplied next turn. Okay, let's do that. Interesting. So definitely leaving Jeff with a lot of choices, a lot of potential directions. I'm guessing. <laughs> So um, 
would it be worth at some point moving in, maybe trying to take out those minefields, clearing those for a couple of victory points? And it would be, and it, it may still be. Um, the issue is that I feel like I have... <clears throat> Jeff's guys in Samakit Kabbalah, because my Panzer Grenadier held, are right. in a tough spot. And once you see your opponent is in a tough spot, diffusing your strength to do other things is not necessarily. Um, I could I could have made a different move there, um, and may have uh, moved done that one turn too early. But right. um, uh, I did what I did, as Herod said. <laughs> That makes sense. To paraphrase. Good advice. All right, Jeff, how are you going to respond? Um, very careful. <laughs> so I'm beginning to see that I actually made a rather large mistake pulling back from Kaponga. Yes. Um, that just gave him too much freedom. To be able to do that. So... Another big change between uh, Desert Fox and other Crisis and Command games that I don't think I paid enough attention to is that getting caught off in this game is not the end of the world. Right. The way it effectively is a lot of the time. Um, and so the, if I send these guys into Kapanga, they may get cut off. But they can also threaten uh, several points along Bruce's supply line and force him to guard that. And so my hope is that, because he now has to, he has to worry about El Kusair, he has to worry about Gabel Kalak, um, he already should be worrying about Karet El Himeimat. I'm just, I'm threatening this corridor in enough places that I'm hoping uh, he's not going to be able to defend all of it. <laughs> so... Yeah, so for those that um, maybe didn't watch last time, in, in this game when you get cut off from supply or when you're um, surrounded by enemy territory, you can continue to move um, and fight. Just at a, you, you get a negative bonus or negative effects to your combat rolls as well as you're limited to movement of, I believe, one space until you regain supply. So even if, even if the Kiwis were to get cut off, they could continue to wreak havoc behind the lines. For a while. Yeah, for a while. Hmm. I have respect to you. <laughs> for long enough, is this scenario. <laughs> right. Well, that's an interesting move. I am not sure how best to take advantage of it. Um, so there so, are a couple things I could do. Note, note, note the couple things. I can take this recon and just go straight to... Abu Shamla. Right. I could actually take that armor and go straight to Abu Shamla. A couple issues there. If I were to do that, I would expect Jeff to just drop these guys from Deir el Munasib on Karad el Hamamat. Uh, because what he would then he'd be in real trouble and would need to cut that southern supply line. Not excited about the southern supply line getting cut. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to firm up my Karadil Himemot units, firm up El Kusayir. I hope I get another impulse. Looks like you might. We'll have to see. I might. All right. We're oh, wait. We're back Back in the good graces. Yeah. <laughs> okay, All right, Jeff. So there, it's 1430. We've got till 1800. I have to assume that he's going to get another room. That's probably a good assumption. So... <laughs> reaching Abu Shamla is a bit of a trick especially considering that a lot of the places I could pull stuff from, I don't want to. Um, don't particularly want to because I don't, for example, he's, he's going to get the imp first impulse next turn, and I don't want, say, to leave Roosite Ridge wide open. Right. 
So How do you think you'll um, tackle that? <laughs> by breaking up the one force on this battlefield that I didn't really want to. All right. So I keep one brigade there. Hopefully that'll still mount a credible enough threat to the southern supply line that uh, Bruce will have to use some forces to maintain it. At the same time, moving these guys to Abu Shamla um, actually, you know, if I'm just looking for someone to block Abu Shamla, these guys will probably do the job. <laughs> Little one-strength infantry units. Well, if you're looking at what he could send right. against Abu Shamla, it's... Maybe two two to three points at most. Uh, three. Yeah. All right. Well, so, we'll holding up that, the lines. We hope that holds. Holding those victory points. So what are we at victory point wise here? Two, We're two, still at two. All okay. right, so definitely still in, still a common All right. Really strong so far. Day two here. Let's do a few more things. So I want to mobilize these guys here. Probably push a little. I want to cover El Kusayir pretty well. And I've got a flak. Flack in there. Protect my guys. There's quite a bit going on in the north. A lot of forces building up there. So it's, it's oh, and that's the turn. Oh boy, <laughs> that was a long that was a long impulse. All right. So now, interestingly enough, <clears throat> I have replacements, and this is the replacement phase. Okay. Um, it's day three, and I have gotten, and this is random. So I've gotten armor and infantry on the German side and infantry on the Italian side, no armor. So that's actually a pretty good roll for me. So let's see what I want to do. I have armor uh, is able to um, reinforce both uh, or to replace both um, armor, flak, and recon. Uh, infantry just goes into infantry. So let's see what I can do. I have an opportunity here in Samaket Gabala. If I were to destroy one of those units, that's two more victory. Each of those units is two victory points for me. I would like to maximize my chance of doing that. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is the 5th Panzer Regiment is going to get a strength point. In addition to that, the 115th Panzer Grenadier will get a strength point. Now I have one point of infantry. What do I want to do with it? I'm actually going to use it well, I guess because I have to do what I have to do here. <laughs> it always seems like that's the case. <laughs> yeah. So I could put it in Abu Shawahid, which is right here and give Trento a chance to uh, have extra strength points to uh, exit with. But I don't think that that's where this game is going to be won or lost. I think that this guy, our Trieste unit, or actually probably the Bersaglieri, because uh, if they were to take a hit, they would get destroyed. I don't want a, a counterattack out of Kapanga taking me out here. Right. So that's kind of a... It's almost a wasted point, but it's necessary. <laughs> Commit that. Okay, now I have points. Right. So back to supply. Back to supply. So this is an interesting dilemma for me. I could take this guy and supply him, and I would guarantee be able to move both of those units. However, I may not get supply into Samaket Gabala. Right. In which case, I won't get a combined arms attack. But I do have. I will be able to move at least one of these units. I will be able to move the newly reinforced. 5th Panzer. I will spend one point on 115th Panzer Grenadier. Let's see what I get. Excellent. It's pretty good. So I didn't get my Panzer. 
but I did get my recon and a whole bunch of other units. So let's do this. Let's just make, this is the move I've got to make. There's surely no other option here. Take right. it while I got it because I see the, um, otherwise the Desert Air Force is coming down on my head. Right. So. A really big, have, big move, I think, right here. A pretty good, sh this is all, this is all dice here. Let's see how lucky I get hitting the commit button. That was a pretty good roll there. That was a pretty good roll. And that might just be, just have been, well... <laughs> that might be the game there. That might have been game. <laughs> well, that's a good question. It may have been, however, I'm still not to 10 points. And Jeff does have good counterattack uh, possibilities. I can uh, exploit with this unit, and I'm going to do exactly that. I'm moving to there. That's interesting that with your exploit move, you could have moved back to the position you started in if you, you know, had wanted to reinforce there. Correct. All right. That was, that was one of the things I was thinking about reinforcing the, um, the second panzer because mm. um, I could then have moved them both in there and then exploited one back. But um, well, first, I don't... If you're done with your move, can you commit it so Game Center can start cranking? Oh, oh yeah. I'm sorry. I'm actually thinking about what, to, where to, where to do oh, this. Okay. No, sorry. I sorry thought you, I I'll thought, let... I thought you were done, and I just thought nope. we'd get through the inner tubes. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I wanted to uh, to point out to people that I can exploit to Talad El Kaif, uh, which will put Alam Halfa at risk. Right. I can exploit to El Mikatat. That doesn't really gain me anything because Talad El Kaif is just as good. Um, the supply line through Wadi El Sakran is safe for this turn. One, two, three. Yes, it's safe for this turn. It may be that moving back to Wadi to Gebel Kalak is actually the best move, but I'm not really sure. It depends on how aggressive I want to be here. Right. Because. If I get counterattacked in Gebel Kalak, um, I do have guys to uh, to try to undo that. Well, let's see, one, two, three, but I can't really. It may actually be wisest to move back um, and see if I can get my last two victory points elsewhere. This is a tough question. This is a really tough question. Let's Definitely. play it safe. All right, I'm playing it safe. Through the intertubes. Here we are through the intertubes. <laughs> All right. Now oh, that, that was actually not as bad as I. <laughs> now we get to see replay of the destruction. But all right. So you do get a desert. Oh, you get replacements as well. And one cool feature we've added this time is the auto assign button. So it, it's not as useful necessarily in this one because you're only dealing with a few replacements and you really need to have a firm grasp on where they're going. But sometimes in the campaign and things like that, you can have a lot of replacements available to you and auto-assign will just help you quickly dish those out to where, you know, the AI thinks is best, which is usually, usually correct. Okay. So at this point, uh, things are kind of falling apart for me because um, I'm looking at, I can no longer prevent Bruce's units from exiting if he really pushes it, okay. unless I do something kind of radical. All right. So we'll reinforce the Free French here. Mm -hmm. We'll reinforce one of those units there. Time for a Desert Air Force strike. Desert Air Force. Um, Desert Air Force, I'm going to see if I can prevent... Okay, so he can he can no longer exit this turn. Yep, that is correct. Far enough down the supply line that I'm <laughs> hoping um, the dice will go against him. Now, in terms of counterattacking his supply lines, I've got several options, none of them <laughs> especially exciting. Right. Um... Kind of a difficult situation. Well, yeah, it's supposed to be. 
Yeah. Um, but I think this is the way I'm going to break. It's a counterattack in an unexpected place, but um, these two Panzer regiments are out of supply now, but uh, attacking them is kind of like riding a tiger. <laughs> because when then when they get when they get resupplied next turn, uh, they're yeah. going to sort of turn on me in the open. <laughs> All right. So Let's see how we're it goes. Gonna hope that was... Okay, that was not. not could have been worse, though. Could have been worse. It definitely could have been worse. All right. So, um, let's see the replay here. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, well. So, once again, there are several things I can do. Uh, I can push some guys. So, I could. Now, if that had, supply line had gone. Um, I do have the ability to try to reestablish it up this way. One, two, three. Right. Um, so you should, when you're playing this game, for those that are uh, you know looking for tips, you should always look. The desert is so fluid. Just because does your supply line points directly backwards doesn't mean it has to point directly backwards. Can kind of go up and to the side and then over and then it's still a good supply line. Um, that would force uh, Jeff to um, first of all that would cut him off completely, uh, so he wouldn't be able to resupply those units unless he uh, unless he moved something else. I and mean, he could reestablish supply, but it would cost him. Uh, he would have to move to do it. Right. Um, right now, actually, I'm not unhappy necessarily with the way things look. Um, what I probably want to do is I probably want to make it just a little bit more difficult. A little bit of a push in the north? For Jeff to, to feel comfortable at it about El Alamein. Remember, I'm, I'm conserving supply to these guys. Right. So I'm just going to commit there. Those guys are still supplied. They are uh, just kind of threatening. Right. So, um, yeah, I just just want to check with everyone. We're at an hour now. Um, we can keep going if you guys like. I want to finish the scenario. Or how do you feel, Bruce and Jeff? I, I think I'm good. I'm uh, okay. five. It's four. Cool. Sure, absolutely. Let's uh, let's just keep pushing on. This this okay. turn shouldn't take too long. Yeah. Um, no. No. I'm not in any rush at all. Just. <laughs> Don't want to keep you if. Uh, yep, I'm I'm doing good. Cool. I, I have I have another hour, probably. Cool. All right, let's finish this fight. <laughs> so you've got a lot of choices here, kind of. Uh, not as many as it appears. Uh, but. So, um, sorry, just, um, have you guys played other North African uh, war games, and how does this compare with the other War II North Africa campaigns? I, I actually haven't played much mm -hmm. else in the way of North Africa. Mm -hmm. so I've, played, I've played quite a bit, um, but they're all, you know, there aren't many games that just deal with El Alamein. Okay. Um, uh, but uh, this is—I think this is a very unique way of looking at this. What's Jeff doing there? He's looking. He's doing something. I know he's looking at El Al. Yeah. Well. Basically, at this point, my entire game hinges on the ability to keep up a credible threat to Bruce's southern supply line. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is step south here into El Hima. Mm -hmm. so that he cannot 
then quickly reestablish his supply line. Okay. And thus he still has to worry about El Kusir and all the spaces along here. Okay. Um, right. It means stripping troops away from El Alamein, which I'm not crazy about. <laughs> but there's two points of minefields there. Uh, I've still got a strong brigade dug in. And, you know, if he tries it, I'll roll the dice. Right. All right, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just spread out in the south. I'm going to threaten al Halfa, and I can still exit either of those two units if they get supply. I can't be counterattacked. And, lastly, it means that uh, if they both somehow get supply next turn, um, then uh, they can't be both hit with Desert Air Force at the same time. Right. So let's just do that. Now note that, that it doesn't make any sense for me to move closer because both of those units can exit from there and you can't exit a unit if, it doesn't, if it's not supplied. Uh, so getting it to the edge of the map and then trying to... Uh, you know, the only advantage of getting it closer to the edge of the map... Well, one, one advantage would be to keep uh, keep Jeff from putting units in front of it, but he doesn't have any units to put in front of it. Um, right. The other advantage would be so that you could um, exit with, with you moving just one space uh, if you didn't get supply, but you can't do that. Uh, you have to ha be supplied, so there's no advantage to getting any closer at this point. Right. So Jeff, back to you. How will you hold this? <laughs> Still thinking. <laughs> so at this point, I'm basically just waiting for the clock to roll around again. <laughs> right. Um, my troops are where they are. Don't really have a whole lot of other options, so I'm just going to pass and hope to run the clock out. So let's see how much time passed. Not that much. I'm not. I'm kind of comfortable with where I am. Also, I'm going to bring some of these. Uh, okay. yeah, thank you. These Italian infantry. Actually, they're actually too far out of the game right now to really even cause me much trouble. Um, okay. But there's not much, and I don't want to pass for a given reason that I'll show you in a second. So let's just move those Italian infantry. Let's see what happens. We might. I might still get another impulse. I guess the Commonwealth will continue to hold. Yep. Okay. Let's that turn back. Got it. Passed. Yep. All right. Is it worth it is the question. So this could be the final impulse of the turn? Could be. I'm seeing if I want to risk that being the case. Um... I have a sneaking suspicion Jeff is going to get another impulse. Just have that feeling. <laughs> um, so I am going to actually pass as well. Let's end the turn. All right. All right. So German infantry gets a replacement and Italian armor gets a replacement. So I will replace the unit uh, in uh, Caradel Hamemat down here. Give the Italian armor. Uh, he's supplied, so I want to put the uh, replacements into units that are supplied. Right. And then infantry. I actually feel like it makes more sense to give, once again, units that have supply should stay supplied and get the replacements. So there we go. That's a good tip. So let's commit that. Now I have once one point of uh, of supply left. Right. And as you can imagine, I'm going to spend it on a unit that is going to try to exit the map. Commit. Oh, that's nice. So that was that was a nice little roll there, guys. Can we zoom in and see? Did they get supply? Everybody's got supply here. Everybody. 
<laughs> in the south. <laughs> keep it PG. Keep it PG. So, bad luck. Let's we're letting, we're letting win, right? It's a. Uh, so now note note something. Well, I could move. Common hospitality. <laughs> I no, could move to, I mean, to Alam Halfa. I was, I was really. I really needed that not to happen. <laughs> so yeah, you. I guess you do have the choice to exit or to. to I take the choice. So here's what I could do. I could get fancy. I could take the recon and put him in Alam Halfa. That's a. That's using two points to get three points. Um, but I, I still have the opportunity to exit the Italians. The one thing that you can't do is once I uh, exit the unit, those victory points cannot be taken away from me. So if I were to go to Alam Halfa and Jeff were to somehow take it back, then it would be a wasted move. This is three victory points in the bank, and so I will commit that. All right. It's coming through. Cool. And you did get some, looks like, some reinforcements this turn up in the... Yep, I have one brigade up in El Hama. I also have some more replacements. And I guess I only have one armor unit down. Okay, so the Desert Air Force. I'm going to nail the German armor, right. just because that's far and away the biggest threat I see on the board. Mm-hmm. Good call. Got one of them. I'm going to throw this in to... Yeah. I could try to hold out on Alpha. what I do have to do. All right. It's as tempting as it is to attack. Uh, if I lose Alam Halfa, it's really it's it's even more curtains than it is already. Hmm. As it is now, I still have a few things I can try to. Right. You know, I can try to pull a rabbit out of my hat. <laughs> well, this is going to seem kind of weird to everybody watching. But I really don't like the fact that there's a three pip armor in Ruiz Outridge. Right there. So that armor could go one, two, three into El Kusair and wipe out a whole bunch of victory points all at once. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to protect them from that armor by going like this. And moving them into that space. So it, it is odd since you just um, broke your own supply lines, but yep. the, yeah, exactly. the grander plan. <laughs> that is the plan. All right. So now Jeff has his New Zealanders that are now unencumbered, can try and make Very unexpectedly unencumbered. Um, unfortunately, as running the numbers shows, um, trying to follow them into that day year is just not likely to achieve very much. Right. So, Now he has the option, obviously, to reconnect in a few areas, which you may be able to spread out and block some of them. But I, he may still have. I mean, there might. I think there's three potential spaces he could get to. Yeah. I'm gonna send these guys down to Alam Halfa. All right. It's there or El Alamein, um, but El Alamein has minefields. Alam Halfa doesn't. So I'd like some extra reinforcements there. That's a good call. All right, so back to Bruce. Yeah, so... Yeah, I can reestablish my supply. A couple ways to do it. Um, one way would be to do this. 
But those numbers aren't particularly good for me, and obviously uh, we would start playing this back and forth um, supply chasing game, which is actually interesting in and of itself, but I don't think that's the greatest move at this point. Um, I have a different move that I could make, which would involve hunting that unit. And that would allow me to exploit to cover my tracks in a different way. Right. Plus you get some victory points, potentially. Right. And I actually really like that move. Great. So let's try that. Let's play it out and see. The inventory can hold. That takes him out. That was like some good rolls, actually. It, uh, that was in no way preordained. Right. Um, so what I can do now is I can exploit here to there. And I can exploit him to there. Still some problems with that. Right. So let's just think about this very carefully. I can also put a little, like a little train going this way. That doesn't really keep my supply line open. You could also curve around. I could do, yeah. I could also, I could also exploit into Rui's Outridge. Seems like a bit of a risk to me. Yeah. Well, the one thing that exploding into Rui's out Ridge would do would be uh, would pin that tank, but I don't want to do that. That, that would have been a better move to do uh, in an, on another turn. Right. So let's do this. Let's just drop that armor into there. All right. So, Jeff's up. I'm waiting for the turn to come in. Uh, Hang on, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, relaunch Desert Fox here real quick. No worries. Sometimes Game Center needs a it needs a little bit of a nudge. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to um, I'm gonna see if we can't whack it a little bit here. And get it to admit that it was there you go. And there we go. <laughs> All right. All right. We definitely spread the supply lines. Um, you know, it looks like he's left them open, but I actually don't think he has. Um, hmm. Because the, the real thing about supply lines is how many points of failure your supply line has. The entire game up until now, Bruce's supply line has been single point of failure. If you lost any of the spaces in this chain, uh, that was it. Right. Now, if you look, in order to completely cut his supply line, that can take at least two spaces, and that could be it could be a Lomniel and a Linda. Right. Actually, no, it couldn't. It would have to be Kara El Himeme and then either a Lamnail or a Linda. Either way, it means splitting up my forces and getting closer to the German tanks, which are two things that <laughs> I'm generally not excited about doing. <laughs> so. But it's also the only way I see. I mean, now I'll think about this. I've got to guard the day or two, or else you can just. Right. I think one interesting part about um, this game as well, uh, Desert Fox, is that 
there's because tracks are connecting almost every space. There's just so many directions you can go at any given time. Um, right. Where I felt like Drive in Moscow and Battle of the Bulge kind of had some pretty key uh, kind of places you need to drive through in most cases, in most strategies. But here, you know, things can really swing and change very quickly. That's definitely true. Okay. Um, I think I may have been wrong there. I think there may still be a single point of failure. Right. Um, this is supply line, and I pretty much have to go. If I pull back into a line on the yard, that re-isolates his southern pincer. Right. Hopefully, now it doesn't it doesn't do anything about these units south of Ruisa Ridge. Right. But, um, I mean, it is what it is. I can't I don't think there's much I can do about them in one move anyway. Mm -hmm. right. So So what I will do is I will reestablish by moving some panzers. Karat El Karim. All right. Excuse me. So Jeff now has to answer that. You do have those New Zealanders still kind of behind there, but. Uh... Okay, so. At this point, my options are limited. Right. Um, I could put, I could theoretically push forward from El Kusayir, but um, that would leave him in a good position to reestablish next turn. Right. Um, Remember, this is the second to final turn, so that. Uh, you know, any units out of supply won't necessarily have a chance to be resupplied if they are cut off in this turn. That's true, but the problem is the units I'm really worried about, which are the ones that can exit. Right. Have all, have all been resupplied still. Um, it's a Hail Mary play. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, that's the right move. Walk well Definitely. <laughs> Right back to Bruce. All right, let's take a look at a very, very unorthodox move here. <laughs> it's probably not going to yield me a lot. Let's take a look at a different move. So it does have some potential. Can you show us the um, the kind of mine clearing statistics? So we've added um, extra screen uh, combat preview of mine clearing, which your infantry units can do. Yeah, it kind of shows you, you know how many mines you might remove if you head into that space, which is important to know as well in many situations because it can change the odds of battle next turn. And that's what you so you can see, I have a pretty good chance of clearing that mine, which gives me another victory point. Right. Um, the other thing I could do. is there's really no way for me to reestablish supply here to my um, to my uh, units that are are uh, cut off here. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take all these guys. I'm going to back them up a little bit. In anticipation of a move next turn to fix my problem. All right. Oh. Ooh. One more impulse. Definitely fares well for Commonwealth. Potentially take advantage of that. Okay, so let's 
so. Final impulse? Final impulse. Um, probably final impulse. Right, I guess Never there's potential. Want to be sure about <laughs> potential. I've been worrying about I've been worrying about Bruce's moves a lot this game. Let's give him something to think about. Mm -hmm. All right. So, final turn. Turn five. Okay. Oh, I have a lot of replacements. Unfortunately, I can't use them where I need them because those guys are out of supply. So I'm going to use the armor on a recon unit. The German infantry on the German infantry. Actually, that's that's not what I want to do. I want to use the armor on the recon unit that's in danger of being attacked. The German infantry on the German infantry. And then Italian infantry. You can put that guy there. And then one Italian armor. Right. Probably would be worth putting him there. Okay. Commit that. All right, you can see now, no supply available. I've used all my supply points. And look at all these guys. Well, there's only one unit there. It's that It's that one uh, panzer down here in Cardel Kadim that can't be resupplied. So I just have to hit commit and see who gets if anybody gets any supply. It's like, didn't really happen. Yep. Okay. So what can we do? And there are a few things. I'm worried about losing the two victory points for Tel Elisa. Let's back a unit up. Let's see what a six against six would do to me here. Probably not much. <laughs> Probably not very helpful. So instead of unmasking those guys right now, let's just take these guys. So Jeff has successfully caused me to worry about his threat to my two victory points, and that'll be my move. All right. I'm getting the download here already. Awesome. Okay. Yep, that was that's what I was afraid of. <laughs> um, all right. So you get two infantry replacements. Definitely caused him to worry. Mm -hmm. so I had to, had to split his focus. Um, uh, well, this guy's also staring down some pretty large and ugly <laughs> um, German infantry. Right. And this guy is just weak in general and holding an important position. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Trying to knock out the supply to 33rd Recon. Successful. Yep. Um, and in the meantime, unfortunately, this isn't the campaign. <laughs> because if it was campaign, I'd get credit for cutting Axis units off at the end of the scenario. Yep. Right. Um, as it stands, it looks like there's going to be a lot of Axis units out of supply, but that doesn't really help. Does not um, in this scenario, no. Right. So, let's run the numbers. All right. Nah, that's not really... <laughs> not... So Bruce, have you um, 
I know you've played with Nick, our C, uh, COO. Um, have you had, got to play with anyone else? Anyone else from the uh, Playtech I've, team? I've played a ton against uh, our dear Craig Moffat, our lead, uh, <laughs> lead program. Craig is quite skillful at this game. I uh, wonder if he's actually programming in little cheats for himself. <laughs> Probably. We, 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 we try to keep an eye on him. <laughs> Make sure that he's a he's a shifty sort of character. <laughs> so let's see. So we've got to move down to Wadi. Yep. Let's just do what would happen if I tried to use this armor to knock out our guy. Probably not. I'd have to hit three times because two hits would cause him to retreat. If I took these three guys and put them in Ruizat. Not much. Not much. Moving him down into El Kusayir. Actually doesn't get me anything now. This supply line that was so dear to me, now that the 33rd Recon is out of supply, I can't exit him, there's really nothing for me to do down there. Um, so right. what I actually am going to do is I'm going to go ahead, see what the, this is a, not the move I'm going to make, but I'll just show the, everybody what it looks like. I have a chance of, of destroying that unit. Uh, it, would get, it would gain me a victory point. But if I go down in Deir El Shein, I have a very good chance of clearing that mine. That also gets me a victory point. Right. Let's see if I can do it. Oh! And the mines don't shoot back. Oh, oh, geez. Oh. <laughs> All yeah. right, fair yeah. enough. Maybe they do shoot back. <laughs> okay. Okay, time to whack the iPad again. Come <laughs> on. Just for everyone watching, uh, Game Center works very beautifully for turn-based play, um, but just for real time, it's not you know it's not really built to do that necessarily when you're working with the asynchronous part of it. No, so. and and the difficulty is that um, you know the packet the the oh uh, you know Bruce's move gets here when it gets here. Right. Exactly. And. Sometimes, sometimes I have to. Uh, sometimes, sometimes put it, going back out to the main menu makes it look for new incoming moves and realize, oh, <laughs> hey. Well, my understanding way. when it was being explained to me was that uh, the the number of times you pull Game Center to see if there's a turn there, you know, that's a battery hit every time you're doing that. So. Uh, if you keep having it, kind of just ask and ask and ask all the time. Um, normally in an asynchronous game, you know, if you make a move, you're not going to make it. You're not going to do another move for a couple minutes. Right. Um, when you're asking it to do it immediately, like we're sitting here right now, <laughs> um, that's a little. Uh, and so, basically, basically going out to the menu the way I've been doing is not something that I have to do in normal game center play, but. To speed things up, it's basically a way of telling telling the iPad to go pull Game Center yep. before right. it would normally do so. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, we're winding down here. Uh, we're getting towards the end. We are. Um, <laughs> just so everyone uh, who's watching on YouTube, Mark Herman is watching and just pulled... Uh, Give the advice. Watch your flanks. So, uh, <laughs> well, uh, I think for both of us, that's a little academic. <laughs> um, that is that is probably true. You know. <laughs> so we're still early in the day, but there's. Yeah, yeah. Um, kind of, a, kind of, a, it's kind of a, kind of a belief. right? It's a good word. At this point, the commonwealth is just trying to inflict some casualties to try to get me down below ten. Right. Ten victory yeah, points. Yeah, unfortunately, um, unfortunately, there aren't a lot of. They're on a ridge. They have flak guns, which are effective against tanks. That's, right. That's just... Anything those Kiwis can do? Uh, against the Panzer? 
Not really. Yeah. They just might force them to retreat, but <laughs> no points there. Yeah, yeah. That's, there, there's no way they're going to actually kill one. Right. Um, again, out of sheer morbid curiosity, what would happen if I yeah, <laughs> Okay, so at this point, the game, the game is pretty much sputtering to an end. Um, the only thing that I could do to try to retrieve the situation at this point would be to try to knock an, an Axis unit out. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. there aren't really any places I can do that because we both committed so heavily to the south. His only weak units are in the north where I don't have anything that can really move up to hit them. Mm -hmm. um, there's also, because of the rule that uh, units... You, you know, stronger units take casualties first. Mm. So, right. like, for example, on this, I would have to get past the ridge, I would have to do a hit to breast to that two-point Brescia, and then my next hit would kill something. Right. Um, getting four hits in that situation is just not in the cards for anything I have in proximity. Right. So, yeah. Maybe. I think with regret, I'm going to pass. Right. And you do have one other option, though. <clears throat> you could hire some assassins to head to Bruce's house. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I think it's too late for that, too. <laughs> well, not until they they get to. Whoops! I shouldn't have done that. I will go back. No worries. Uh, I will hit pass, which is what I was trying to do. Which will end the day. Which, which will end the game. Um, which I think I think it about reached the limits of his of its interest anyway. So congratulations, Bruce. Yeah, Bruce, good job. Thank you for the game. That was excellent. Yep. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to everyone who uh, who watched today, and uh, thanks for Bruce and Jeff for playing. Um, what we saw here was the uh, Russite Rich scenario. Um, again, make sure to check this out, the campaign, um, and look on our website, our social media, we'll be letting you know about a release date really soon. So just stay tuned. We'll let you know as, as soon as we know. You will know. So Excellent. <laughs> All right. All Thank right. you guys so much. Thanks, everybody.